Today on Rodder's Garage, I am back on the 28 Dodge Roadster Project. All right guys, so this is video number three on the Dodge Roadster Project. When this thing first showed up, I basically disassembled the entire car, took the frame out for sandblast and got that cleaned up. In the second video, I spent about two weeks of time redoing the entire chassis. I cut all the boxing plates loose, re-welded everything from the front to the back on that because it was terrible. Put some new cross members in, put new tube cross members in for the engine mount and the transmission mount, rebuilt the front suspension, triangulated four link in the back. Chassis is good to go, and also I got the body sitting back on it too in that last video. Today, today we're gonna focus on the dashboard. Dashboard, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty ugly the way it's set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and start out by grinding all the paint off this thing, filling every single one of these holes in here. We're gonna start with a blank canvas up here. I'll fill it in, grind it off, we're going to start fresh with our new 5-gauge set and try to place them in there where it uh, looks a little more appealing than what's going on here. Also, out back, out back, we have a little bit of work here to do as well. They had some goofy lights mounted on the back of this thing, some big knobby plastic clear lights, which I assume maybe they were going to use as reverse lights. Um, I don't think that was quite necessary. And some equally as weird taillights they had mounted on this thing when it showed up here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug weld all these holes in the back of this thing license plate holes as well down here because the plate is going to be hung underneath here probably make a custom bracket to drop down in the center for the license plate so this is going to be clean shaven we're going to smooth it out and then i have a set of pontiac taillights i'll be putting in here and i think i'm going to french them in just a little bit because it usually looks a little bit better and well there's other reasons you would want to french something in just a little bit as well we'll get to that when we get to the taillights first things first though I'm gonna go ahead, put my mask on, and uh, tear some paint off this thing. Let's go. Well, that is it for plugging the holes in the tail pan. That turned out pretty nice. Everything sealed up there, ready for tail light install up here. As you saw earlier, the dashboard is finished as well. Everything's welded up, ground off. I did a little bit of hammering down here at the bottom 
uh, just because I had a little bit of a pull here and that lower area where I welded the center in and we are looking pretty good at this point right now so I'm gonna go grab my gauges do a little measuring and lay out the marks so I can start drilling the holes for those that pretty much wraps up the dashboard nice clean simple layout gauges down the center got my turn signal indicators in and a bright light indicator up top grab the ignition switch off the wiring harness and put that in right away centered out between the bottom of the dash and the bottom of that center gauge and that's pretty much it nice smooth clean layout I think um, there's a good possibility too when I get to the wiring I don't think I'm gonna drill a hole in the dash over here for the headlights um, I think I'm gonna put it underneath. I've done that quite a few times uh, Once you get the hang of it and know where it is. It's not a big deal You just reach under the dash pull the knob straight down and that's off and on that keeps everything clean over here Same with a cigarette lighter. I mean everything pretty much needs a cigarette lighter these days for charging phones GPS and whatnot I really don't want to punch anything in over here. It's just nice and simple and plain the way it is I think I'll do the same with the cigarette lighter either more towards the center so the driver can reach it or even over here Straight down behind the dash you would just plug your charger up into it and that way this dash can stay nice and clean and Simple just like it is. I think it turned out pretty good. So now that that's wrapped up. Let's move on to the taillights All right, so the plan for the taillights is a set of these 1950 Pontiac taillights got these out of Speedway and that is what is going to go on back here so i was talking a little bit earlier about frenching these in and i am going to french them into the tail pan a little bit um and in my opinion there's two reasons for frenching a tail light number one it just looks a little bit better it looks like someone put a little more effort into it if you will it's got a little more style being sunk in but the other reason and actually in my opinion an even more important reason to french a tail light in is because if we look at this tail pan right now um, if we mount the tail light, we're gonna be like this That's how the tail light would sit it would be at that angle and actually it improves visibility a little bit If we stand the tail light vertically So when a car is behind you following you the tail light is parallel to them not leaning one way or another It actually does quite a bit for tail light visibility by having it standing or sticking or projecting straight out the back of the car 
So, when I French these in, I'm not gonna French them in even. I'm not gonna French them in basically at the same angle as the tail pan. I'm gonna French them in so they're standing vertical like this. And basically, so the top of the Frenching bucket uh, pretty much comes to the rubber here on the top of the tail lights. So this rubber will be right at the body on the top side and then on the bottom, if we kind of look like this, I'll probably probably be in about an inch, inch and a quarter, something like that. And that will allow that tail light to stand vertical and aim straight towards any following cars. Plus, I think it's just gonna look cool. So, first things first, I didn't really want to tear all the paint off the tail pan here but with the amount of Bondo and filler that's on the back of here, I think I'm just gonna go ahead, put my mask on one more time and take this all down to bare metal. Car's getting painted anyway. They're just gonna have to re-mud everything after I tear it off. So, start with that. We'll go make some rings for the back of these taillights to make some Frenching buckets, get those made up, and start sawing some holes in there and see what we can make happen. the tail pan is cleaned off just a little bit of filler that came off of there yeah quite a bit actually they had the whole thing skim coated and that was one of the reasons I wanted to actually get it off of here because I wanted to see exactly what was going on I figured it would look something like this um, and actually it's not too bad really what I wanted to see was when I placed my buckets in you know here and over there if there was any major height differences or anything goofy going on with the sheet metal underneath all that filler but actually it looks pretty nice i should be able to at this point mark out my centers cut my holes in and just weld them right uh basically you know surface flush with this steel that's here and they should be able to remud this back out at the body shop and it should look right the biggest reason i say that is is if one side was way pushed in lower than the other side when I weld those buckets in, I would almost have to accommodate for that or bring the sheet metal out. So when they do do the filler to make the thing smooth again, one of the buckets is not a considerable or a noticeable amount deeper into the body than the other side after the body work is done. But like I said, we're looking pretty good. This area here and this area here look to be pretty much the same. The only reason for all the filler was all these millions of little dents in here and the fact that they overlapped the seam from the tail pan to the quarter and basically had this piled probably a half five eighths thick from here in so we should be good to go ready to start mocking up some holes making some parts get those tail lights in
so I've got my buckets tacked into place at this point, and if you caught that earlier, I tack welded a piece of angle iron on the back of the buckets. Now in most cases when you're Frenching taillights into a fender or whatever else, you can't really do it this way. But because of how warped up this tail pan is, and nothing's quite measuring out here either, I got these things pretty much identical side to side. However, the tail pan over here is about 3 eighths of an inch taller than over here. So I kind of split the difference up and I don't think it's really too noticeable. I mean, it's about an eighth inch off, but you have that much more material. So basically I just centered the bucket on both sides and really I'm cheated up over here about an eighth of an inch to, to accommodate and make that happen down what I figured to be the center line of this tail panel. The top side over here is a little taller and the bottom side is shaped a little different over here. I've got a piece of angle iron clamped across the back of my buckets. That is keeping them 100% on the same plane. They're not tipped one way or another. They're bolted on, so I know right now for a fact that they're both aiming straight out of the car with that angle iron tacked onto them. I also put a couple of screws in it just to bite a little bit harder and make sure those buckets are perfectly parallel and on the same plane. So I'm good there, I'm centered out on the buckets. I tacked them in fairly heavily, made sure to get some bleed through into the crack around the taillight. And basically at this point, I would be ready to start welding them in, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take the cutoff wheel and trim everything down, give them a quick grind, and put the taillights in just to make sure I like what it's going to look like. It's kinda hard to tell right now with all that stuff sticking out. So I'll trim it off, put the taillights in, and give it a quick look before I totally dedicate myself to going this route. Yep, that's it right there. Yeah, that turned out really well. I'm really happy with the way that looks from the back side. So that looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the lights back out after the deck lid checks out and get this stuff all welded up. Should be good to go. Oh, no problem at all. I don't even have to worry about that. Good. guys so that is pretty much gonna be it on the little red roadster for a while those tail lights turned out great I really like the way they Frenched into the tail pan it's a lot better I think than just surface mounting them on the back they had a really good look to them but that's it we left off a little while ago on that thing it's been a couple of months here for me and we decided to take a break on the roadster as you can tell it's not here anymore so we actually threw a lot more time and effort into this thing than what, uh, what was originally anticipated, um, specifically on that chassis. If you've been following along on this series, you'll know that the chassis was uh, complete garbage, basically. So all of that really wasn't intended to have to be done, and we racked up a serious amount of time and hours in this thing. So we're going to take a little bit of a break for a while on the Roadster. Uh, maybe it'll be back, maybe it won't, I'm not sure. But at this time, that's pretty much going to wrap up the roadsters repair series so appreciate it guys thanks for watching be back with something else shortly till next time